the best picture race is not over. Coda has been just rising. Power of the dog is just slipping. And now I am scrambling trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I know a lot of people think now it is Coda and it's signed, sealed, delivered. I am not 100% sold. I think it's time when we do my annual stat experiment to see which film really has the statistical edge coming in on Oscar evening. Hello, hello everyone. If you are a returning viewer of this channel, welcome back. If you just stumbled upon this video, I'm assuming you're as Oscar obsessed as I am. And if so, you are in the right place. My name is Ryan and today's video, we are looking to predict the best picture using a formula called the stat stack, which is a formula that looks very closely at some of the most staggering Oscar stats to see which film is statistically strongest going into Oscar evening. Now, this is an experiment I've conducted for the last two years. And the last two years, the winner of this experiment actually ended up taking home best picture. So the winner today was Parasite that won with eight votes. We have a clear winner. We have No Man Land winning with nine points. All right, so we're going for it again, everyone. We're gonna see whether this formula goes three for three, crossing fingers. For those asking what Oscar stats are, you can watch my previous video where I talk more about Oscar stats in more detail. I'll leave those videos in the description below if you wanna check those out. In short though, not to waste your time, considering Oscar stats can be incredibly helpful when coming to your determination and predicting who will win, right? However, relying on Oscar stats alone can be a a bit like playing with fire because eventually, trust me, you will find yourself getting burned. And the reason why is Oscar stats are by no means foolproof or, you know, they're not, they're not ironclad, you know, stats get broken every year. So it's really difficult to hang your hat on one particular stat alone because you never know whether that year is the year the stats gonna let you down, which is why I started thinking, why hang your hat on just, one stat or maybe two stats. Why not just look at all the stats combined, put them in one big stat stack pile, and then see which film has the most stats working in its favor. And perhaps that's the film that's gonna win. So let's do it everyone. Let's see what film comes out on top in the name of science. Let's go. Right in front of me, I have all of this year's best picture nominees. Also, I have in front of me 10 of the most staggering stats I can find. For each one of these staggering stats that these nominees fulfills, I'm gonna award it one point. The film at the end with the most stats working in its favor will be the winner in my personal prediction for best picture. So there are two ground rules that I set for this experiment. Rule number one, I only use stats that date back to 2009, since that was the year they started the preferential ballot again, I wanted to only use data from 2009 and higher. Rule number two, each stat needed to have at least an 80% accuracy rating or higher. So for example, last year, a stat involving the SAG Ensemble Award was about an 81% accuracy. However, last year that stat was broken because No Man Land won Best Picture without a SAG Ensemble nomination and that dropped its accuracy down to 75. So that stat was given the boot. But the good news is by removing and tweaking that stat just slightly, it actually made previous years even more accurate. And I'm gonna show you that formula and how it played out in all the best picture races from 2009 and above at the end. But first let's get started with our first stat in this year. All right, so let's jump right into our first stat. The first one is called the DGA stat. And that states that basically since 2009, 12 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners were nominated for a DGA as well. So you have to go back all the way to 1989 in which a Best Picture nominee won without a DGA nomination, which was Driving Miss Daisy. This year, the five nominees for uh, DGA were Licorice Pizza, Belfast, Power of the Dog, Dune, and West Side Story. Okay, great. Moving on to our next stat. This one is the editing nomination stat. And this one says since 2009, 11 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners 
also received an editing nomination. There was one outlier in the last 12 years that someone won Best Picture, a film won Best Picture without an editing nomination, and that was, you already guessed it, yes, Birdman. And the five nominees this year were Don't Look Up, King Richard, The Power of the Dog, and Dune. Okay, moving on to our next stat. This one is the Golden Globe screenplay stat, and this one states since 2009, 12 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners also received a Golden Globe nomination for screenplay. This year, four of the Best Picture nominees did that, and that was Licorice Pizza, Belfast, Power of the Dog, and Don't Look Up. Okay, moving on to our next stat. This one is called the Any Acting Nomination stat. This one states since 2009, 11 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners also received at least one acting nomination. So the biggest branch of the Academy are actors. And the only film that did not get an acting nomination out of the last 12 years and went on to win Best Picture was Parasite. And out of the Best Picture nominees, there were only five this year that had uh, an acting nomination in any of the categories. And that was Belfast, Coda, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, and King Richard. Moving on to our next stat, and that is the Best Director stat. This one states since 2009, 10 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners also received a Best Director nomination. So this one is pretty important. There were two outliers of the last 12 years that did win on to win Best Picture without a Best Director nomination, and that was Green Book and Argo. So this year, our five nominees for director was Licorice Pizza, Belfast, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, and Drive My Car. Okay, let's move on to our next stat. This one is the Golden Globe Director stat. This one says since 2009, every Best Picture winner has received a Golden Globe nomination for director. Uh, and that is actually even more accurate than having an Oscar nomination for director. Every single winner of the last 12 years has had a Golden Globe nomination for director. This year, four of the Best Picture nominees were nominated for the Golden Globe director nomination, and that was Belfast, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, and Dune. All right, let's do a little score recap before we move on. Right now we have Drive My Car with one vote. We have Don't Look Up with two. We have West Side Story with four. We have Licorice Pizza with three. Right here with just one point is Coda, guys. All right, we're gonna get to that later. And then we have Power of the Dog with six. Right here with five, we have Belfast. Here with three, we have Dune. With two points, we have King Richard. And with zero, as expected probably, we have Nightmare Alley. Okay, moving on to our next one. And this one is the Major Guild win. This one states since 2009, 12 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners have won at least a DGA, a PGA, or a WGA. This year, only three films have achieved that, and that is Power of the Dog with a DGA. Coda won a PGA and a WGA, and Don't Look Up also won a WGA. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a point each. All right, moving on to our next stat. This one is the Golden Globe BAFTA or Critics' Choice stat. This one is since 2009, 11 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners have won at least a BAFTA, a Critics' Choice, or a Golden Globe for Best Film. And this year it was Power of the Dog and West Side Story. All right, moving on to our next stat. This one is an interesting one. This one is the Telluride Film Festival stat. I believe I originally heard this from Mark Johnson, who is now writing for Awards Daily. This one states, since 2009, 10 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners played and screened at the Telluride Film Festival this year three of the films screened at the Telluride Film Festival, and that was Power of the Dog, Belfast, and King Richard. All right, let's recap the score really quickly before we move on to our last stat. We have Drive My Car with one. We have Don't Look Up with three. We have West Side Story with five. We have Licorice Pizza with three. Coda with just two. Power of the Dog with nine. And we have Belfast with six. Dune with three, King Richard with three, and Nightmare Alley making a comeback with zero. 
All right, and moving on to our last and final stat. And this one says, since 2009, 11 out of the last 12 Best Picture winners had a SAG Ensemble win, or at least two SAG nominations in total. And the only outlier of that of the last 12 years was No Man Land. But the films this year that did have that was Belfast, Coda, King Richard, and Power of the Dog. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. We have a very clear winner in this stat stack experiment. The winner is Power of the Dog with a whopping 10 points. But honestly, let's just let's just go ahead and call the elephant out in the room right now. Coda came in with three points, which I even have to admit, it's very, very concerning. Right now, it's a very interesting time going out there right now where most of the Oscar pundits are all jumping the power of the dog ship and hopping on Team Coda. And I, I do understand that. I get it. Coda has been winning like crazy lately. It won SAG Ensemble. It won PGA. So this is the year that I think it's the, the Oscar stats versus Oscar momentum. Because Coda is, is definitely without a doubt. It's without a doubt unequivocally building massive momentum coming into Oscar night. You know, Apple has been campaigning like crazy. The cast of Coda is everywhere. And right now it's just hitting a cultural zeitgeist right now that you, you really can feel in such a tangible way. The question is, is this momentum strong enough to overcome all these hurdles? I mean, when you think about it, to me, I, I just view Oscar stats as, as obstacles or hurdles. Take the sport of track and field, for example. Like Oscar nominees are like runners running down this track, hopping over hurdles to get to the finish line. However, like maybe your film doesn't get nominated for editing or maybe your film didn't get a major precursor. It doesn't mean that your runner can't still win the race. However, I see each one of those misses as an extra hurdle those runners are going to have to now jump over in order to win. And you can imagine if a runner had to run down a track with six hurdles against another runner with just two, I mean, who's likely to win that race? You know, and that in itself is, is kind of the essence of what I wanted to create with the stat stack. I wanted to, to, to help call also long shots. So if you look at the year like Moonlight won, it was a huge surprise. I mean, La La Land won PGA, it won BAFTA, won DGA. But we often overlook that Moonlight did have a lot going for it. It got the editing nom, it got the screenplay nom, it got the SAG Ensemble nom, it got the Golden Globe drama. Yeah, it didn't win as many industry awards as La La Land or as big as, you know, prestigious awards as La La Land, but Moonlight did hit almost everywhere it needed in terms of like nominations, showing it, it did have widespread support. Then you add in the factor of being an early front runner. And we all know, you know, being the early front runner like La La Land can be dangerous. You know, the award season's long and it leaves time for people to get a little bored of seeing the same film win over and over again. And that's probably where Power of the Dog appears to be dealt the unfortunate hand of being the early front runner. So now back to the question of what I'm going to predict this year. I mean, I said it earlier. Look, you know, the results of this experiment two years ago had Parasite winning with eight points and 1917 had five points. It showed in this experiment that there was like some weakness with 1917 and the majority of pundits were predicting 1917. And I, I know we're probably living in a time right now at this year where genuinely stats just really do not may like do not matter at all. And maybe Coda is just writing its own rules this year, but with only three points, that means Coda is gonna have to jump over so many hurdles and stats, and it would be breaking uh, so many that it would just be historic. And you know, Power of the Dog does have a few a stat or two that's gonna break, but I'm concerned about all the stats. I mean, someone can break a stat, break two stats, sure, sure, I can see that, but breaking 
many stats. I mean, no director nomination, no editing nomination, no DGA nomination, no BAFTA nomination for best film. Look, you all do what you want, everyone. If you wanna jump off the power of the dog ship and swim off to the Dakota life raft, I get it, I, I totally get it. But for me, as captain of this stat stack, and like the captain in Titanic who goes down with the ship, if I'm going down, if I'm going down, baby, I'm going down with the SS stat stack. And by the way, I have absolutely nothing against any one of these films. I have nothing against Coda, nothing against Power of the Dog. I'm just, I'm purely looking at this at a very unemotional scientific standpoint, scientific in quotes. The formula was written prior you know, to these precursors. So the results are just the results. And even though it gives me no comfort at all, it gives me no comfort. I do not feel comfortable with this guys, but I'm predicting Power of the Dog. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. That's it. I'm predicting Power of the Dog <laughs> to win Best Picture. Again, you do what you think is best for you. This experiment admittedly probably leans more in the pseudoscience category over actual science. But just like how astrology isn't really grounded in any real science, really, it's still pretty fun and interesting. And that's what the whole point of this should be. It should just be fun, right? Let's have some fun. Let's spice it up. So that's why I'm going power the dog. That being said, as I mentioned, I did run this newly tweaked formula going all the way back to 2009. And currently, all the winners of the stat stack did actually end up taking home best picture with exception of three years in which there was a tie. So in the event of the tie, I also created a list of sudden death tie breaking points. And after those tie breaking points, the correct winner does emerge. But you know what? Let me just show you how this stat stack stacked up in the other years dating back to 2009. Check it out. So what do you guys think? Who are you predicting to win Best Picture? Is it Coda or Power of the Dog? Shout it in the comment section below. In the next few days, I'm hoping to post my final predictions video for all the other categories, as well as my reaction video to hearing all the winners on Oscar evening. So feel free to subscribe for more Oscar and movie related content. Until then, I will see you at the Oscars.